Okay, so have you ever felt like, I don't know, maybe this century, the 21st, kind of threw us a curveball? Yeah, it's a lot, right? Technology just keeps accelerating. The world's more complex. Mm -hmm. Everyone's trying to figure out where they fit in all this. Exactly. It's like, what now? Yeah. You know, and it's not even just about keeping up anymore. It's about shaping the future, the... actively making it better. You got it. And that's what we're diving into today. We're looking at some excerpts from this book. It's coming out soon by Carlos Goga. It's called Dancing Our Way to Human AI Consciousness. And it's all about navigating this exact moment, this crazy point in history, using these insights that Goga's put together. And the coolest thing, the way he frames it, it's like a dance. You, me, AI, we're all partners in this big, intricate... Tango. Yeah. Walt. Maybe a little more complex than that. Definitely more complex, but you get the idea. It's not about one partner leading or dominating. It's about everyone well. Finding a rhythm that works that benefits everyone, that's harmonious. Harmonious integration, is that what you'd call it? That's Gorga's term. Yeah. And he actually lays it all out in five parts, kind of like, I don't know, learning a dance, you build on each step. Love that. First, oh. set the stage, right, that's the dance floor. Then there's the dancer. Who are we in this new world? Makes sense. Then what? Then it's all about how we approach this whole thing, the mindset, that's the attitude. Yeah. And finally, the actions we take, the footsteps. And, of course, you can't forget our partner in all of this. Exactly. Yeah. No dance is complete without a partner, which leads us to the final part, the tango with AI. So Goga's created a roadmap, really, for how we grow, both personally and together, in this new age, right? That's a great way to put it. And the thing is, he doesn't just pull this out of thin air. He grounds it all in history. There's this fascinating table in the introduction. Oh, yeah, the historical table. I was hooked on that thing. It shows how this whole idea of being better, striving for something more, it's evolved over centuries. And how different it looks now compared to, say, a couple of centuries ago. Remember the good old days when the biggest dilemmas were about which empire to worry about and, like, a few big philosophical then debates? I, now we've got climate change, AI ethics. What even is work going to look like in 10 years, let alone 100? Yeah. This whole other level of... Complexity. And the institutions we used to rely on for guidance, like religions, they don't hold the same central place they used to. So true. It's a much more secular world, for better or worse. And that brings a whole new set of questions, like think about the values you were raised with compared to the ones that really matter to you now. How do those line up? How are they different? Wow, good point. And that brings us back to Goga's main question. How do we, you know, just as regular people live lives that feel meaningful in the middle of all this change, all this complexity, how do we even define what our purpose is when AI is becoming such a big part of everything? And what I think makes this book so important right now is that it's not just another, like, self-help book, you know? Yeah. It's a call to action. It's about recognizing that we're all actively shaping the future, whether we realize it or not. So Gobi wants us to be more mindful about the choices we're making, how our actions affect not just ourselves, but... The whole world around us. It's about understanding that personal growth and collective well-being, they're two sides of the same coin. Totally. And while AI is a big part of the picture, Goga's really looking at something much broader, right? Absolutely. It's about figuring out how technology, how all this amazing stuff we're developing can actually make us more human. Not less human, like some of those dystopian movies would have us believe. Exactly. It's about striking that balance where technology enhances our lives, our relationships, our world, not diminishes them. Bringing together what might seem like opposite ideas, like traditional wisdom and cutting-edge technology, personal growth, and the well-being of everyone. It's about recognizing that we're not just along for the ride in this crazy, rapidly changing world. Mm. We're the ones behind the wheel, or I guess on the dance floor. It's about finding your own rhythm in this dance, yeah. And I think a good place to start is by understanding the dance floor itself. Okay, so we're talking about understanding the dance floor, right? From Gorga, that's the 21st century, all the craziness that comes with it. But he doesn't want us to just, like, dip our toes in. Mm -hmm. He's talking about a whole new way of seeing the world. Bigger than just, like, looking at the headlines or whatever. Way bigger. He calls it a cosmovision, which, all right, I know, sounds kind of intense. Just but, a tad. But really, it's about understanding where we fit in the grand scheme of things. Not just in a scientific way, but, like, what are our values, our purpose? How do we relate to everything around us, especially with tech changing so fast? So big picture thinking is key. Got it. But it also feels like with AI changing everything so quickly, the dance floor is kind of always moving under our feet, you know? 
<laughs> How are we supposed to get our footing if we can't even feel a solid ground? That is the million dollar question, and that's where Goga's next part comes in. The dancer. He wants us, the listeners, to look inward. Inside ourselves. Exactly. Yeah. Before we can even begin to wrap our heads around the whole world, we got to understand ourselves. Like, mm -hmm. what actually matters to you? What gets you up in the morning? What kind of mark do you want to make on the world? It's kind of like that old saying, right? Know thyself. Totally. Yeah. But Goga takes it a step further. He's saying self-awareness isn't just about, like, journaling and reflecting. It's also about evolving. So not just looking in the mirror, but actually, like, changing our outfit if we don't like what we see. Exactly. He's not saying we should cling to outdated beliefs or be scared of change. He wants us to take the best of what we already know and step into this new era with, as he puts it, conscious grace. Conscious grace. All right, I like the sound of that. But what's that actually look like, you know? Give me an example. Okay, so it's about cultivating certain qualities within ourselves. The kinds of things that'll help us not just survive, but thrive in this constantly changing world. Like what? Give me the secrets. Think adaptability, resilience, and being okay with not knowing what's going to happen next. Being okay with uncertainty. That's a tough one. It is, but so important, especially now. Makes sense. Okay, so that's the inner stuff, the mindset. But how do we actually act with conscious grace? Goga talks about approaching the world with conscious love. Is he talking about like hugging trees and AI robots. It's a bit more nuanced than that. Think of it as approaching everything and everyone, even technology, with empathy. Being aware of how our actions affect things and taking responsibility for that. Okay, so an example. Instead of just scrolling through social media like on autopilot, we can pause and ask, who made this? What are their biases? How's this affecting me, my mood, my view of the world? It's like being more present in our interactions, even with technology. Exactly. And that leads us to the footsteps, which is where things get really interesting. Time to learn some dance moves. We've got the outfit, the attitude. Now it's time to... Get on the dance floor and actually move. Right. So what are these footsteps? What's Goga teaching us? He breaks it down into three main steps. First up, self-knowledge, which you remember builds on everything we were just talking about. It's about going deeper into our values, our beliefs, all that stuff that makes us, us. Like stretching before a big workout. Gotta warm up those muscles. I like that analogy. Then comes step two, self-improvement. This is where we take all that self-awareness and actually use it to make positive changes in our lives. So we're not just observing, we're taking action. Yes. This could mean learning a new skill, ditching a bad habit, even just working on our relationships. Whatever helps us become the best versions of ourselves. Love it. From the inside out. Okay, so what's the final step? What brings it all together? The third step is all about sharing the love, spreading the good vibes. Gola calls it spreading. He's saying that real growth, like the kind that matters, isn't a solo mission. It's about how our own transformation impacts everyone around us. Like a ripple effect. You toss a pebble in the water. And those waves just keep going. This could mean teaching someone something new, mentoring them, volunteering, even just having deeper, more meaningful conversations with our friends and family. Goga stresses that even the little things can make a huge difference. So powerful, right? Recognizing that we're all in this together and our growth is connected to everyone else's. But I got to ask, we've got the basic steps down, but what happens when our dance partner is, well, artificial intelligence, that's a whole other level of coordination, isn't it? Okay, so we've got the dance floor figured out, we've got our dancing shoes on, we've even practiced the steps, and now it's time to meet our partner artificial intelligence. This is it. The final part, the tango with AI. And I got to say, this part always felt, I don't know, the most futuristic to me, <laughs> maybe even a little uh, intimidating. Uh oh, absolutely. It's like, whoa, AI. But Goga is really good at reminding us it's not about fear. It's about approaching this whole tango thing with a sense of curiosity. Like, what could this be? Because it is a partnership, right? Just like in a real tango, both dancers have to be, you know, in sync, responding to each other's movements. Exactly. And ultimately creating something. Beautiful. Harmonious. There you go. Harmonious again. So it's not about us versus them, humans versus the machines. It's about how we can work together, right. how we can move together. And this is where I think that whole idea of conscious love that Goga keeps coming back to, it really clicks into place. Right. It's about being intentional about how we interact with AI, with technology in general, being aware of the impact it has on us on humanity so it's less about okay how can ai do everything for us and more about how can we use it as a tool you know yeah how can we use it to make our lives richer our relationships stronger our world a better place 
Give me an example. Where do we see this tango happening in the real world? We'll take healthcare for example. AI can help doctors diagnose diseases earlier than ever before, come up with treatments that are tailored to each individual patient, or in education, imagine AI helping kids learn in ways that make sense for them, no matter what their needs are. It's like personalized learning for everyone. Exactly. And even in art, right? AI is pushing the boundaries of what's possible creatively. It's helping artists explore completely new ways of expressing themselves. It's mind-blowing when you really think about it. But then, of course, there's that other side of AI, the one we see in all the sci-fi movies, you know, right. the whole robots taking over the world thing. Does Goga address that at all? He does. He doesn't shy away from the potential downsides, the risks that come with AI. But he's also very clear. The key is to be proactive. Not just sitting back and waiting to see what happens. Exactly. We have to ask the hard questions now. How do we want to live with AI? What are the ethical lines we don't want to cross? <laughs> because the choices we make today, they're the ones that are going to shape the future. We're not just along for the ride. We're the ones choreographing this dance with AI. And the steps we choose, they determine everything. That's a powerful way to put it. Okay. It's both exciting and a little daunting, right? Totally. But I think what I appreciate most about Guga's approach is he doesn't just dump these big, overwhelming questions on us and then leave us hang. He actually gives us tools, frameworks, ways to think about these things. And let's not forget about that soundtrack section at the end of the book. Yeah. It's amazing. He's got all these extra resources like articles, studies, everything you need to dive even deeper into all this. It's like a curated playlist for your mind, <laughs> expanding your thinking on all these topics. Yeah. You know, when I first picked up this book, I'll be honest, I thought it was going to be, you know, one of those dry analyses of AI and society. But it is so much more than that. It's an invitation. It's like, hey, come on, step onto the dance floor of the 21st century and figure out how you want to move. With intention. With yeah. purpose. Yeah. And yeah, why not? With a little bit of joy along the way, right? Exactly. Because even with all this crazy technology, at the end of the day, our humanity, that's our superpower. And it's up to each of us to decide how we're going to use it, how we're going to shape the future. So to all our listeners out there, here's the big question. If the 21st century is our dance floor, what will your steps look like?